Hi, my name is Rachel Melhorn. I'm the Family Bereavement Services Coordinator here at Full Circle. Um, I'm so glad that you all can join us virtually for our conversations about grief today. Um, I am in charge of at Full Circle our Hands on Healing program. Um, if you're not familiar with um, our Hands on Healing program, it is a support group for children ages 3 to 17 and their adult caregiver. Um, the group is open to families who have experienced the loss of someone close to them. Um, in the group, we incorporate art-based elements um, to support children and families in talking about feelings, learning coping strategies, talking about goals they have as a family, and receiving support from others in the community. Um, you can learn more about Hands on Healing on our website. Today, though, for our conversations about grief, um, I'm so happy you all are here and able to join us. Um, we're going to be chatting about finding gratitude during times of grief or times of pain. Um, I'm a visual learner, and so I have a PowerPoint to kind of go along with some of the things we'll be chatting, um, chatting about today as just sort of a guide. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you all. Again, I'm Rachel Melhorn. Um, I want to start with this quote from David Kessler. Um, David Kessler, if you're not familiar with him, is a writer and a researcher who writes and, um, you know, does a lot of work in the, in the grief um, area. And he, he said this quote, he was talking to a group um, at a conference that he was speaking at. He said, gratitude is not in the death, it is in the life. So I think very, um, very much so. Sometimes there's this push, right, to, to find silver linings or to find gratitude in a loss. And I want, you know, to say up front that that's not what we're um, going to be talking about today, right? I know that it can feel frustrating when people say things like things happen for a reason or, you know, find the light in the, in the darkness, right? And when we lose someone close to us, it is very dark. It is very painful. There's a lot of you know, a lot of challenges, a lot of feelings that come up. And so we're not, you know, looking at gratitude in the, in the death of someone that we love. Um, there's oftentimes nothing to be grateful for about losing someone, right, of course. Um, so David Kessler, he's at this um, conference and he has experienced a loss as well. He lost his 21-year-old son and an audience member, when David is talking about gratitude, asks him, you know, how, how do you do this? How do you find gratitude when you have lost your son? And, and how do you, how are you grateful? How do you find gratitude in that? And he said, you know, losing my son was the biggest tragedy of my life, but a larger tragedy would be to have not known him, to have not shared moments with him, to see him, you know, do the things, to have the memories I have with my son. So today we're going to be talking about gratitude as a coping strategy to build resilience. Um, gratitude can help connect us to our lost loved one because it connects us to the memories that we have of them, but it can also serve as a powerful coping strategy and way to sort of shift our framework, shift our mind work, which I'll chat a little bit about. So this quote says, I seem to notice the cracks in a lot of things, but I am working to notice the light in things too. This is by Morgan Harper Nichols. Um, and I, I think I wanted to chat about this quote too when we talk about gratitude, because I think oftentimes when we experience something painful like grief, our spotlight on what we see in the world is very narrow, right? We've experienced something difficult, something painful. So everything in our environment that feels difficult or painful is what we see. So we see the negative, we see the bad in our situation because it's where our spotlight is. It's just where we're at. So, you know, finding gratitude is about widening our spotlight to see the light, right? To see the things about, to notice the things about your day that there are to, to feel goodness about, to feel gratitude in. I want to talk about the word gratitude um, just to kind of make sure we're all on the same page of what that means. I know most of you, all of you maybe probably do, right? Um, I think it's this idea of, of giving thanks or finding things to be thankful for. But I think the definition that fits best for what we're talking about today is actually um, the word gratitude derives from the Latin word gratia, which means grace. 
And I think when we're talking about gratitude and the context of grief, this is a really good place to start. Um, early on after a loss, there's typically no gratitude to be found, right? Um, and this is okay. A way that we can kind of reframe the early stages of grief to think about gratitude is to think about wins, right? So wins you have throughout the day, a win could mean getting out of bed. A win could mean taking a shower, reaching out to a friend to talk, making a healthy meal. Those are wins. Yeah, and when we talk about gratitude, another way to think about it is acknowledging the goodness in our life, which, you know, as time progresses, we're able to do more and more. So oftentimes, right, acknowledging the goodness that is around us. Um, we will talk today about gratitude as a coping strategy to build resilience. So again, that quote there, but resilience is the process of adapting well in the face of adversity, trauma, threats, tragedies, or significant sources of stress, right? We talk about resilience a lot at Full Circle and in gratitude is all about an opportunity to build resilience. And resilience is basically just the, uh, the ability to bounce back, right? The ability to experience something painful and, and adjust to the new normal. And gratitude is a powerful tool in being able to do that. Um, there's a, so much research, a huge body of research now, especially within the field of positive psychology that shows how taking notes of what you are grateful for um, can really improve your overall health and well-being. Um, in positive psychology research, gratitude is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Um, and gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relishing good experiences, improves health, deal with adversity. And because of all, those things, right? It helps us build stronger connections and stronger relationships with those around us. So we're going to be talking today about a few different um, ways to apply, you know, using gratitude in your own life. I wanted to kind of start with the story um, of a woman named Kelly Buckley. She is a woman who started sort of a movement that she calls Just One Little Thing. She wrote um, an article about how she incorporates gratitude after experiencing her own loss. And I, I'm going to read you her words and her story today about kind of how she incorporated gratitude as a way to cope and as a way to build resilience and also sort of you'll hear right with the widening of the spotlight seeing things outside of her experience of pain and, um, and heartbreak so here are the words of Kelly Buckley I began my journey towards a grateful life sitting in the parking lot of a funeral home on the back of an envelope containing my cable bill I scrawled random thoughts the serene beauty of the lake, the divers, his friends, the cool rain that mingled with my tears as I stood on the shoreline, the 4th of July fireworks that illuminated the night sky as if heaven was welcoming, welcoming my beautiful son home. And so began what I call the most awake years of my life. My 23-year-old son, Stephen, was dead and I was shattered into a million pieces. I, would, I was groundless, looking desperately for the rug that had been pulled from beneath my normal life, only to find that someone had taken the damn floor too. So I surrendered to it. I had always thought I was a fixer, a woman of strength, but this time I had nothing. Sitting on a bump in the sand at the edge of Jordan Lake, my life was stripped bare. I looked to the heavens and wondered if, if I would survive this pain and begged for help. Grieving with gratitude was the answer I received. It seemed counterintuitive to even think of thankfulness at the darkest moment of my life, but I knew this was to be my path. From that moment, I knew that this was a conversation that I needed to have with others about how we perceive and journey through grief and loss. So I started to write. My younger son, Brendan, and I agreed that if we could find one little thing each day to be thankful for, we would get through this together. Each day, we would look for a simple blessing and I would write about it. 
on particular difficult days, I could not even completely inhale because the physical ache in my chest from the pain of losing my beautiful boy. So I could give thanks that this broken heart of mine continued to beat. As the days, weeks, and months passed, our list of tiny blessings continued to grow, bringing flickers of light and hope along with it. We found we couldn't just limit it to one little thing any longer. Blessings were sprouting up all over the place. Butterflies. Belly laughed with snorts included. Fresh strawberries, naps, a letter from Stephen's friend. Birds, chats with my son, or a moment of normalcy with my husband. It didn't change the pain of the loss, but it did alleviate some of the suffering. I started to see that all these one little things were actually the big things that really gave meaning to my life. This path of gratitude was healing me and tethering me to the present moment as I grieved. And in the present moment, I was okay. So Kelly Buckley has actually done her own um, writing, has written her own book about her, her um, movement of just one little thing. She has a group on social media where others who are grieving post and kind of help keep each other accountable to finding one little thing each day. This is a great resource to do with someone who you're close with, a friend, a family member, naming something each day to do at the end of the day or the beginning of the day with your family. Um, just sort of, again, helping you to find resilience and to, to broaden that spotlight as a means to cope. Another way to kind of think about this is to create a gratitude jar. Um, so kind of the idea behind a gratitude jar is you can write something each day that you're grateful for, or whenever you kind of feel like you think of something. You can also do this specifically um, with the person that you've lost, so thinking about things you're grateful for about that person and add them to the jar. Um, you can do this as a family or you can do this individually, but one of the things I love about this idea is in those moments, right that Kelly talked about of of where the only thing it feels like you can be grateful for in this moment is just that your heart is still beating and that you're still here you're still going through it you're still feeling is you can dump out this jar and read all of these things right and help to to kind of keep you in the present moment I think gratitude is one of those things that helps us to stay present helps us to stay grounded um, and so this is a tool to practice gratitude Another um, great tool to practice gratitude is journaling. Um, there's so much research similar to just a gratitude practice in general, so much research about journaling and the way it affects our brains and the neuroplasticity of our brains, um, allowing us to process and really be in our experience. So there are so many great gratitude journals out there for adults and kids. Um, one of my favorites that I use is called the Five Minute Journal. Um, and I like this journal because it's really short and sweet. At the beginning of the day, um, it's called five minutes because it really only takes five minutes, maybe even a little bit less. Um, the beginning of the day, there's a prompt I am grateful for, what would make today great, and a daily affirmation, so I am, right? So just listing one thing you're grateful for, something that would make today great, so it's a way to set goals for yourself and, and helping you to feel grateful for something at the end. And maybe that's those wins, right? Maybe that's what would make today great is if I took a walk for five minutes, right? Giving yourself the opportunity to have things in your upcoming day to feel grateful for. Daily affirmations of I am, I am here. I am breathing. I am surrounded by people who love me, right? At the end of this journal, um, you list three things that happened today, three amazing things that happened today, right? Sometimes for me, that's just three okay things that happened today. Um, and then how could I have made today better, right? So something about your routine or your day that maybe you could pivot um, in the future to, to, as a way to sort of be in gratitude, right, and for what you have. Lots of great journals out there um, that are really quick and easy, and it's just as a way to sort of document, again, similar to the jar, as a way to look look backwards to on, on some things to be grateful for when 
you know, you don't have the headspace to think of anything fresh. Um, so I want to kind of come back to another quote to end you all today. Um, this is another quote from Morgan Harper Nichols. I want to acknowledge, you know, that this is a difficult time for grieving families and we are here at Full Circle to support you in anything that you need. Um, gratitude, practicing gratitude, right, is also just a tool. So if this doesn't resonate with you, if you try this and it doesn't, you know, work for you, that is okay, right? It's just another tool to have in your toolbox. And maybe this is something you've learned about but never tried. I encourage you to give it a go, to give it a try. Um, but again, if, it, if it's not something that speaks to you right now, that's okay. You can put it, put it to the side and revisit it later. So I want to end with this quote, another one from Morgan Harper Nichols. She's one of my favorite poets. Um, she says, you are free to take your time, to take this day by day, knowing in your heart this will not change. You are loved. You are seen. And there is grace to walk through these things. She goes on to say, no matter what you fear, there is love for you here. Never ever letting go, no matter the unknowns. Through every feeling or thought or worry or fear, you are free to close your eyes and take deep breaths here. Um, so thank you all so much for joining me today for our virtual um, conversations about grief. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Um, and hopefully this can be a tool to support you um, during this time. Again, my name is Rachel Melhorn. Um, you can find my contact information on our website at fullcirclegriefcenter.org. Um, thank you so much. Have a great day.